Welcome to Information Technology Infrastructure Library, ITSM, Part 1. I'm Trainer Laurie. So what is ITSM? It's Information Technology Service Management. And we're going to talk about service management as a practice, generic concepts and definitions, and key principles in an effort to help prepare you for the ITIL Foundations exam. What do you know about ITIL? For example, who owns it? Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> the Cabinet Office or the Crown, also known as the UK government. What does it give guidance on? The provision of quality IT services and processes, functions, and other capabilities to align IT with the needs of the business. How is it a framework? It's a vendor-neutral, cohesive set of best practices drawn from public and private sectors internationally. What's its relationship to a standard like Six Sigma? It's non-prescriptive and cheaper, while the standard is still a driver that helped develop it, but it is not a standard. What is produced? A set of best practice publications for IT service management. Based on what? The service life cycle with five life cycle stages. Can you name them? Service strategy, service design, service transition, service operation, and continual service improvement. Components of a process. The definition of a process is a structured set of activities designed to accomplish a specific objective. A process takes one or more defined inputs and turns them into defined outputs. And there are 26 processes in ITIL. For example, capacity management. I know it's a process because it ends in management. There are only two of the major processes that don't end with the word management. But in capacity management, the components would be a trigger. All processes start with a trigger, for example, the service level agreement. Metrics, for example, for with capacity management, it would be the number of components. Three would be results, and in capacity management, the example would be an adjustment strategy. And four is customers, and for capacity management, it would be an internal work team. Also, there's governance. Governance ensures that processes and strategy are implemented and correctly followed so that you can scale. What are other names for stakeholder? You notice that customer is also known as a stakeholder? Well, how about customer, client, user, contact, internal user, asset, capability, employee, resource, owner, sponsor, board, partner, provider, source, supplier, third party, contractors, key stakeholder, shareholders, functions, groups, support, responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. These are all different words that could be used on the exam to identify a stakeholder. What is service? A means of delivering value to customers by facilitating outcomes that the customers want to achieve without specific costs and risks of ownership. For example, let's say that we're offering a loyalty club. Well, the customer would transfer costs and risks. For example, if it takes overtime to make the uh, meet the deadline, the customer doesn't need to uh, worry about that because they're transferring the costs and risks to the service provider. But the customer still needs to retain focus on and accountability for outcomes. For example, his boss might want to know, how's it coming? How's that loyalty club coming? Now, the service provider takes on those costs and risks, for example, overtime and is responsible for the means of achieving outcomes. So if that means hiring more contractors to get it done, they do whatever it takes. Multiple perspectives of IT. It could be an organization with its own set of capabilities and resources, like business functions with shared service units. A collection of systems, applications, and infrastructure, like components or sub-assemblies, just the parts of the, the computer, for example. A category of business assets, which would be a stream of revenue for owners. The IT costs are treated as investments. And it could be a category of services utilized by business. In the IT applications and infrastructure, the costs are treated as business expenses. Just know that there's lots of different ways of looking at IT. You don't need to memorize all of these. What are other names for technology? Now, this is a really important concept because they cannot ask the same question and have the answer uh, with the same words. Sometimes they do, but mostly they don't. So other names for technology might be asset, technical asset, resource, capital, 
investment, configuration or configuration item, component, disks, memory, hardware or HW, software or SW, backup, information technology, environment, facilities, computer, server, client, build, unit, assembly, subassembly, tools, structure, infrastructure, and architecture. Again, you don't need to memorize these, just know that any of these could mean technology. Sometimes the answer is in the question, sometimes it's not. Business services and products should be outcomes-based. In other words, begin with the end in mind. Think about the whole unit before you ever start d designing, otherwise you'll come up with a crazy quilt. Instead, we want a unified look. We want to define outcomes as vital business functions. Identify services that support them. Define how supporting services will be aligned and support the entire chain of dependencies. Begin with the end in mind. What is service management? These are all definitions that are critical. Service management is a set of specialized organizational capabilities for providing value to customers in the form of services. Well, capabilities, as you may recall, is how well you can do your job. Value has two components, utility, which means it's fit for the purpose it was designed for, and warranty, which means it's fit for long-term use. And the service, which could be, for example, the loyalty club. So service management is taking our organizational capabilities, providing uh, value, to customers in the form of services. And remember, there's only one you on either side of the equation in value. The definition of services is a means of delivering value to customers by facilitating outcomes customers want without the ownership of specific costs and risks. We just saw this. Remember, the customer transfers the costs and risks while the service provider takes them on. A business outcome is the results as seen by the business. Service assets is any resource or capability of a service provider. We'll discuss that more in a minute. And customer asset is any resource or capability of a customer. Service assets include resources, that's the people and the tools that use them, and capabilities, and that's how well they use them to do their job. But if you want more ex information about it, a resource is any tool that might help deliver an IT service, including the number of people, financial capital, infrastructure, applications, and information. And capabilities is the ability to carry out an activity. And that would include not just people, but their experience, skills, and relationships, the management, the organization, and the processes. Service is a means of delivering reliability, maintainability, and availability for a configuration item. It's kind of like having a problem with your refrigerator and calling the service repairman. Performance, a measure of what is achieved or delivered. And value, and as you remember, value has utility and warranty. What kind of assets are there? Can you remember? There's two kinds. They are capabilities and resources. And remember, capabilities is how well we can do something, and resources are the actual tools, the number of people and the tools that it takes. That's all for this time. Please subscribe to the Trainer Lori channel, and if you like it, please click like. Thank you.